I'm Chris Palmer at Farrell and welcome to this Point Sensor Revit 17.5 new features video. In this video we're going to be looking at batch lowering of MEP families, fitting pipes to the point cloud, placing pipe fittings and aligning the pipe runs. So in order for us to do any modelling now we need to have the specific families loaded in that we need to use. So if I just go to families in the project browser now and have a look at our pipe fins that we currently have loaded and also our pipe types, you can see we've got quite a limited number of fittings available. So if we want to load these in, in standard Revit, we would go to insert and load family. We would navigate to the pipe uh, file and find the relevant fitting type and load that in one by one. So what we've tried to do with PointSense is make this a lot easier and quicker. So if we go to Object Tools and Load MEP Families, what we can do is go and choose a type of fitting that we want to bring in. So in this instance I could use maybe an elbow. And we can go and look for the look at the path and just maybe select in this instance uh, UK, Libraries, and we'll go to Pipe. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to search through all of that file for any matching elbows so or any elbow families so I just click OK now you can see there's 340 families contained within there but what the software is going to do and I'm just going to speed this up quite a bit is it's going to search through all of those 340 families for elbow families specifically and we're going to import those so you can see now it's found 51 matching types and we're going to bring those in so if I go back to my project browser and scroll down, you can see we now have lots more elbow types with long radius, bends, etc, etc, which we can now use to do our modelling. Okay, so now we're ready to fit some pipes to this point cloud. The first thing I'm going to do is just change my scale to about 1 to 20 and my detail level to fine so the pipes display correctly. I'm then going to just go down and have a look at the pipe types that I've currently got set up. And I'm just going to add a new one called carbon steel. So I'm just going to duplicate this standard type and we're just going to rename this carbon steel. And if I just look at my properties and my root and preferences, I'm just going to change the pipe segments to carbon steel. And I can also change the default elbows, T's, junctions, crosses, etc, etc. So quite standard is a long radius bend for a carbon steel pipe. So we'll just select that one and click OK. OK, so now I'm ready to fit the pipe. I'm just going to go to my um, fit pipe command. And select the level and the pipe system that we're using, so level 0 and other for the pipe system and press start. I'm going to go and make one selection at the top, one selection at the bottom. Notice we're going through these fittings, we're just fitting that pipe itself at the minute. So just another selection down here. What that's going to do is it's going to give me a dialog box which is giving me a display of the pipe within that section of point cloud. You can see if I just navigate around this, you can see how well it fits. So what we've got at the top is a detected diameter of 170 external um, and we've got a rounding factor of 10 millimeters. So it's found our best fitting pipe which is a carbon steel with an external of 166.1 millimeters. We could select a different pipe type if we wanted and insert that with an adjustment but what we can do is just select that pipe we've got and insert that type. If we want to, we can add insulation to this additionally. So if I tick that there and change that to phenolic foam, and I can change this to maybe 75 millimeters if I wanted to. We'll just take that off for now. We'll just fit it standard as it is. So you can see, if I just go and turn that off, and now go to insert type, that pipe will fit into that area of the point cloud. Okay. So now we can see that's fitted there now. So this process is going to be a case of fitting the pipes themselves first, then fitting the fit, fitting the pipe fittings, elbows, tees, etc, etc, within the point cloud, and then aligning the pipes. So it's a three-stage process. 
So we go back to fit pipe. I'm going to select the start and end of this run here. Notice we haven't got a lot of coverage on that pipe to be honest. And it's detected at around about 160. So let's just go with our last used type, which we know is the, the correct size. And I'm just going to insert that there. And we can have a look to see how well that's fitted again. What we can also do after this is we could use a surface deviation to check how accurately these are fitted if we wanted to do that. So that's a good fitting pipe right there. And we're just going to go now and put that last segment in. So I zoom out a little bit, come around, fit pipe again, pick the start from where the elbow is uh, to the this reducer here. And then we get the next pipe. So it's obviously given us our last use type again, which we can select if we want to. And then that one's in there as well. Okay, so this time now we're going to run the same function, but we're going to do it within the virtual serve interface to make the selections a little bit easier. So I'm going to go to fit pipe, and I'm going to use the same settings as before, but this time we're going to make our point selections inside virtual serve, which sends the coordinates back through to Revit. The pipe fitting will actually be done in Revit using the point cloud that's there. However, we can actually hide the point cloud off as well, um, which we'll do shortly. So you can see that's fitted the closest matching type. However, what I want to do is actually go into a different type, which is carbon steel, and insert this with an adjustment. We could hide the point cloud off now as well to um, do all this without point clouds loaded. But if I just insert that there now, it's going to ask prompt me basically to change the nominal and inside diameter if I want to. For now, I'm just going to click OK, and we can see that's inserted that pipe in its place. So let's go and do another one now, but this time we're going to hide the point cloud off. Remember, we did have that. Hide, use hide point clouds button tick before. So we press start. This time I'm just going to go and click those two positions on that pipe. And now we're fitting the point, to, uh, the pipes to the point cloud. However, we haven't actually got the point cloud displayed inside Revit. So it gives us a little bit better view of how the pipes are building up inside the uh, actual interface. So I'll just select this last one there now. And we can use our last used types, and we've got six pipes extracted. So I'll just shut Virtual Serve down now, and next we'll look at putting some fittings on pipes. Okay, so now we're going to look at placing some pipe fittings. So I use the place pipe fitting command, and now the software will analyze the fittings that we have loaded to see how we can work with them using our point sense pipe fitting command. You'll notice a few of these families won't load in, won't quite work so well with the tool. Most do however, the vast majority do. So we're just going to navigate around to our first elbow we're going to look at. And I'm just going to again click place pipe fitting and I'm going to select one pipe and then the second pipe and then press the escape key. And that's going to throw in the first um, elbows, possible elbow selection that we, we have there. And we can then just go to this drop down list and scroll through and have a look at what we think is the most suitable fit in type. In this instance, I think we need a, um, a long elbow, uh, which is butt welded. Uh, obviously, that has to be carbon steel, so let's go and find that one there now. Drop that in, you can see now that that fits well. We also, in the properties here, have this fixed at 90 degrees. However, if we tick this use any angle, this is going to tweak very slightly to use the actual angle that we've got within our pipe fitting from the point cloud. If I just click the pan and zoom command, I can actually just go and have a quick preview of that connection before I accept it. Press escape and I'm back in there and I click OK to take that as an inserted pipe fitting. That's great, so let's go and have a look at this second one here now. Slightly different radius on this bend. I can hide the point cloud off. I don't actually need the point cloud loaded to do this if I, if I don't want to. Sometimes it might be a little bit easier. So let's go back to place pipe fitting. Select one end and then a second end for the pipe. Press the escape key. You'll notice we have a last used types here now, so I could just select this one again. However, we know that's not accurate. So we're actually going to go and 
So we're just going to go and find a standard elbow from the list and use that there. So we could actually also take this using the angle if we wanted. Um, and just we're just going to click OK now to insert that elbow. If we bring the point cloud back in, we can have a bit of a navigate around and see how well that's fitting and how well that's joining up. Seems to be OK. And then we'll have a little bit of a look at our other pipes here. So I'm just going to do the same tool again. Now this time I'm going to go and rather than use an elbow, I'm going to go and show you how a T would fit in. So we're just going to select the T. A separate option that we do now get is the orientation toggle. So you can see now, depending on if we did have three connections here, we can toggle the way that that is going to fit using this toggle button here. We'll just drop that elbow in. And if we just look at this pipe at the bottom here now, one option we do have is to insert a fitting when we've only got one pipe connection open or one end connection open. So if I just go now and bring the point cloud back in, and this time I'm going to go to place pipe fitting, but I'm only going to select one end of the pipe. So just this single selection and then press the escape key. Now you'll notice this is showing me this butt welded elbow. However, it's at a slightly wrong angle and slightly wrong position. So at the bottom we have this placement insertion offset. We can use the by point button to then go zoom in the point cloud and find the start of that elbow probably wasn't the most accurate selection but we could then also tweak that if we wanted to to round that up maybe 190 and then we can also use a, a rotation angle by point as well so if we just click that there now that's given it a rotation of about 78 degrees it's probably more close to 90 so let's go with 90 click OK and you can see we've managed to put that elbow in just using one open end of a, of a pipe run so now that that's done, okay, what we'll look at doing is aligning these pipes and joining them all up so that we have a nice smooth pipe run with no breaks in it. Okay, so for the alignment of pipes, we need to be very conscious of pipe links. So the pipes that we need to align to each other all need to be uh, have links between the fittings and the pipes themselves. So if we just go to the line pipes tool now and select this one pipe here, you will see that the information dialog box comes up to tell us that there are five elements selected because all of these pipes are linked. If we press yes now, this will run an alignment on those pipes, all of the link pipes and fittings, um, to join them up so that they are nice and accurately um, connected together. So if we just hide that off, if we focus maybe on the on the separate section here now if we run align pipes on this you'll see we've got two pipes linked but what we can do if we want to is add and remove pipe links so for example if I go to set pipe link and select these two open connections you'll see that now connects those with a green line we go back and click on this with the align pipes and now we've got three aligned pipes we won't align that because that will give us a quite a bad result but then we can actually then go and remove that if we want to. So we can remove that pipe link. Now we've got three individual items with no links. The third option we've got for pipe links would be to do an auto link. So here we go set pipe link auto and you can see it's got a search tolerance of 300 millimeters and it's going to look at the open end of every pipe to find a additional connection. So in this instance you can see it's found one additional connection which was the one we just removed um, which is red and we're going to say we need to add that one into our model so if we were to go and align those pipes now you can see those two are connected the one other thing to be conscious of is that if we are to go and add extra um, components into our pipes this does not break the connections so PointSense is set up to recognize this and incorporate those into into those existing pipe links so here we are we've added another T in if we were to go to align pipes now you can see now we have seven elements so it's broke the pipe and added the extra one in but the pipe links have remained